Just chasing the threads on these other poles for in the uh, for the water pump where it bolts on. I had this one was got stripped out because of a big load of corrosion when we took the bolt out one day. So it's all drilled out and threaded to put a Healy coil in, which we haven't got to yet. But while I had it apart here, I wanted to chase these threads. Make sure that they're the ones that I that I didn't have problems with were nice and clean. It just cleans a lot of the goop out of the out of the threads too. It makes everything uh, work much easier. Who's keep it down over there? Fifteen. I'll come up to fifteen and we'll take her today. Well, there we go. Put your gallon. So now the holes are cleaned out, and uh, I'll just blow any chips out of that hole that might be in there. Watch your eyes. There. The space keeps getting smaller all the time. Okay, anyways, if I didn't tell you earlier, the threads were bad in this hole, and I had to uh, drill it out, and I'm going to install a Healy coil in it. So, here's our Healy coil. There. On the, the applicator, I guess you call it, or whatever. And I got a little knuckle buster there to turn it. And I'm going to put just a little dab of, of um, blue Loctite on it. on the safe side. That should do that. And we'll start it into the hole. Me thinks. Thread it in there so that it's okay, right there. It's just uh, okay. okay. There's flush. Let's go another half turn on it. Installation tool and back it out of there. And one last thing to do before we're done is we knock out the tang on the on the Healy coil so that the, the bolt can extend through there. So oh dear. 
I certainly did not want to do that. Okay. Took a bite of it there. I didn't think it would, but it did. Now, figure out if I did get the tang out, I'll have to get something else to stick in there because that's too fat. Speaking of which, this doesn't get any easier. It certainly looks good anyways. And there it is on the end of the magnet. Okay, Healy coil is successfully installed. Now I have to wait for a while for that Loctite to set before I go bolting the water pump on, or the bolt will be frozen in the hole. And we don't want that. Well, I just finished polishing the top rad tank which is uh, obviously brass, or looks like gold. Anyways, I did it once 40 years ago, and it tarnished so quickly that I never bothered doing it again, but I come up with a better plan here. And uh, so what I did is I polished it with Brasso, which worked quite well on it. Um, what worked best was... It's an old 3M pad that's seen better days, but they're softer. If you use a new one, the new one will scratch the finish on the rad tank. And as a matter of fact, this one will scratch it on the, the rad tank as well. But what you do is you, you use the Brasso and the soft worn out pad and rub it gently and it will take the oxidization off fairly quickly and uh, speaking of which there's a little bit right there that I missed but it's coated now I'm not gonna worry about it it gives it kind of an antique look I think I got a new rad cap to go on top but anyways back to what I was saying I use the Brasso and this green 3M pad to, to take the oxidization off and then I buffed it with a piece of uh, flannel and then I clear coated with this armor coat lacquer clear finish two coats it went on real nice and that's supposed to seal it so that the oxygen won't make it um, oxidize again until you know at such time the clear coat needs to be redone and then of course you can get that take that off probably with lacquer thinner and you wouldn't have to do all that buffing again to bring that tank up to coat it again at least that's my theory that's what I think that probably it would be easier because this time was a fair bit of work and the first time we did it was a fair bit of work it, uh... so anyways these here I'm going to cut take the tape off once this dries and I am going to uh, paint that black and then down the sides this is well I'm not going to worry about the part you can't see this is by no means a show truck so anyways that's where we're at right now oh yeah and something else I gotta do next um, I got a, an electric fan to go on on here and I've taken I've already taken the uh, the stock fan off which was a flex fan uh, I took flex fan off and we're we're all set in here for the uh, electric fan to go in and 
like your fans sitting in the back of this truck waiting to get installed. So the parts are here. I just have to keep my motivation. I ran into a problem when I was trying to mount this uh, electric fan on the rad. And I'll show you what the problem is. The bracket kit is not, uh, the center, center bar is not wide enough to reach these. These part pieces here, whatever you want to call those, and uh, so, anyways, basically the the bracket kit in its form that it comes from LMC truck is pretty useless uh, unless it's on a cross flow rat, I guess. But anyways, I found uh, a solution to the problem. Oh, and by the way, this, this didn't come with instructions, and I got in touch with them, and they sent some instructions. So once I saw how it was supposed to go in, I came up with the, my solution. And my solution is uh, I made these brackets here out of aluminum, and uh, I got two for the bottom here as well. And uh, I, I bent them so I could get the fan in a little closer to the rad. It's a 16 inch fan, but it doesn't, it doesn't cover the whole rad by any means. But it should be okay. It's close enough to the rad. It should suck pretty good. But uh, anyways, just thought I'd show you this, this bracket issue. And you know what? It probably would have been just as easy for me to not buy the bracket kit and make my own brackets out of aluminum that go right across. But uh, anyways, we'll try it this way first. Well, the worst thing that can happen is it might, might uh, touch the rad core, but I'm gonna put some uh, little foam pads in there to make sure that it doesn't contact the the rad core because it's uh, those rad cores are usually pretty delicate I and mean, you don't want water squirting out of there in the middle of the highway okay just one more check to make sure that it's spinning the right way well hell it's spinning so fast I can't tell which way it's spinning there we'll shut it off when it comes to a stop. Holy moly. There we go. Well, it must be spinning the right way because there was wind coming out of there. <laughs> now it's time to uh, get myself something to stand on so I can put it back in there and uh, finish putting this truck back together so I can drive it. Anyways, looks good to me. Okay, that's got the rad back in there. A lot more room in there without that big fan shroud that was in there before. And uh, when this is sitting on the floor, I can climb in there and stand on the floor and work on the engine without leaning way, way over like a hound on a football. Humping a football, whatever it's, whatever it is. But anyways, uh, it's starting to come together. Another few days, we'll have her running again. So let's see what's left in the trunk. Ah, geez, I gotta climb over that. I don't think so. We'll go the other way. tank over there and there's the big shroud that was there before that we don't need anymore and he's oh yeah the fan the, the original boss 302 fan is down there too so I'll have to find a place to put that uh, I've been considering selling this engine so if I sell the engine I want to make sure that all the boss 302 stuff goes with it and uh Maybe shove a, a big uh, 
Stroker 640 Ford Big Block in there. Maybe. But anyways, for the time being, this 302 does very well. Okie dokie. A little more. A little more work, and then uh, I gotta order more more parts. Mm -hmm.